So let's continue with recombinant DNA technology. Uh, a look back into the history of recombinant DNA technology. The first recombinant DNA molecule uh, was mainly produced in 1972 by Paul Berg, a researcher from the Stanford University. And what he did was he joined the DNA fragments from two different viruses with the help of a particular enzyme called the restriction enzyme and the leakase. And restriction enzymes, they are molecular scissors which will cut the DNA at a specific sequence. Now, if you need to cut uh, and join something of course uh, if you need to join it okay they should be having compatible ends only in only then two sequences or two DNA sequences can be glued to each other so in order to join two foreign DNA uh, what Paul Berg did was he cut the vector DNA as well as the gene of interest with the same restriction enzyme and as a result, what happened, both of them got compatible ends or sticky ends which they could, where they could be glued to each other. And the enzyme which he used to glue these DNA molecules, uh, of course, the gluing is just a term which I used for you to understand properly, uh, or to, to glue them together, he used an enzyme called the ligase. So, two main restriction enzymes, which are, are two main enzymes which are being needed for recombinant DNA technology is one is a restriction enzyme and the other one is that you need a leakage. And if the DNA from the different source is cut with the same restriction enzyme, uh, the cut ends can be joined together and then they are sealed into a continuous DNA strand by the enzyme leakage. Paul Berg, uh, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1980, Nobel Prize in Chemistry, uh, for, the, for his fundamental studies of the biochemistry of nucleic acids and especially uh, when we were talking about recombinant DNA. Now, this is a picture from the Science History Institute, which is depicting what uh, Paul Berg had done. So, this is the vector DNA SV40, which he had taken. SV40 uh, was being cut using a restriction enzyme. Echo R1 is a restriction enzyme which he used here. Echo R1 um, uh, is a restriction enzyme which is derived from uh, E. coli. And uh, at the same time, he took another lambda DNA, that is a bacterial virus lambda phage was there. He took that and he cut that also with the uh, Echo R1. And as a result, you can see at the end of this vector DNA, as well as the end of the gene of interest, they are being found to be matching with each other. So the reason why you cut the vector as well as the gene of interest with the same restriction enzyme is that they form sticky ends. That is, they will be compatible with each other. And after that, what happens? The vector DNA as well as the what? The chromosomal DNA is being joined together. So, uh, the first attempt in genetic engineering was to join these two DNA and to form a recombinant DNA. And this work was being done by Paul Berg. And uh, if you go into, uh, into the more details of this, you can see that uh, Echo R1 is a restriction enzyme, as I told you. Uh, now, you might think, what is a restriction enzyme? In naturally itself, within the bacteria, what happens they produce certain enzymes uh, which will degrade off all unwanted DNA which happens to enter into their uh, body they are called the restriction enzymes okay all the foreign DNA which happen to enter into them are being, uh, are being uh, removed by naturally occurring restriction enzymes so uh, a restriction enzyme produced by echo or uh, by e coli that one, there's an example called echo R1. And this restriction enzymes, they usually recognize specific um, nucleotide sequences and they make cuts at that particular sequence. Now, here, echo R1 recognizes a sequence called GAATTC and uh, it makes a cut between G and A. Okay. And, uh, you know, always DNA is being found to be double stranded. So, if you go to take a plasmid DNA, a cut has been pro provided between G and A here as well as G and A here. So, the plasmid gets cut.
Hmm? And the DNA which has to be inserted into the plasmid is also been cut with GATTC. So what happens? They will get sticky ends. The plasmid as well as the uh, the gene of interest is being taken, is being cut by the same restriction enzyme and after that they are being treated with an enzyme called the DNA ligase and that would result in the formation of a recombinant DNA. This is the basic step of genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology. So Paul Berg was the first to form the recombinant DNA and uh, after that in 1973, the first organism to contain the recombinant DNA was being engineered by Herbert Boyer as well as Stanley Cohen. And uh, what they did is they introduced the antibiotic resistance gene into the E. coli bacteria. Stanley Cohen, uh, he received the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1986 for his work on the discoveries of the growth factors. And uh, Herbert Boyer also was a, a part of this uh, this experiments and they constructed the first recombinant DNA using the bacterial DNA and the plasmids. So something what I need to tell you here is you got your recombinant DNA over here and this recombinant DNA has to put has to be inserted as we mentioned here into a particular host. Okay, only then it becomes a recombinant bacteria. Now, the step till here, the formation of recombinant DNA was being discovered by Paul Berg. And after that, uh, it was Stanley and Cohen who inserted this recombinant DNA into a particular host. Okay, so uh, in 1972, Paul Berg produced the recombinant DNA. And in 1973, it was Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer, who introduced this recombinant DNA into the bacterial host. So, in genetic engineering, what you do basically, you select your product or characteristic which has been needed. Now, for example, here, uh, antigen A for hepatitis B or something, I will explain that. So, you then you isolate the genes from the specialized genes. That is, the genes of interest are being, uh, are being taken and then insert the genes into the target cells and replicate it within a new organism and you take the product. Now, in the case of hepatitis B uh, vaccine, okay, uh, what does it mean? The antigen for hepatitis B is being taken or the gene which codes for antigen of hepatitis B is being taken and that is being inserted into another vector, okay, so that it forms a recombinant DNA Okay, and that recombinant DNA is inserted into a yeast cell. In the previous experiment, we found that it was a bacterial cell. But in the production of hepatitis B vaccine, the recombinant DNA is inserted into a yeast cell, and the yeast cell is grown in culture, you know, in large fermenters. And once the yeast Vac uh, culture has been grown, the proteins coded by it has been extracted and we use it for the production of the hepatitis B vaccine. So, you got an idea of uh, what is a, what are the steps of the recombinant DNA technology and how it was, uh, how it has been produced from the ancient level and now we are having a lot of successes using the recombinant DNA technology and we will be discussing the various products of recombinant DNA technology in the coming sessions. Thank you for now.